I'm Luke. And I'm Emily. And, and we're, we're Tiger, Tiger News. news. We're going to inform you on all the top news. First we have Adam with local news and Brian with national news. Next we have Devin with international news and Aaron with your five-day forecast. After that we have Luke with sports and an interview with Brendan Wall. Finally we have Kylie with public safety. But last but not least we have Emily with entertainment news. Here comes Adam with local news. Adam Mifsud here with local and I'm going to tell you about top places to sled in New Hampshire. In Bedford, New Hampshire, we have Benedictine Park, located on Walson Road, a great multi-use area. Next, we have Kimball Park in Concord, located on North State Street. Merrimack, New Hampshire's Western Park, located on Mammoth Road is fantastic. We have Roby Park located in New Hampshire located off of Split Road. Finally, right here in Londonderry we have Max Apples located on Mammoth Road, another great place to sled. Finish with fresh hot cider. Back to you in the studio. Now maybe I'll get down to one of those places this weekend. How about you, Luke? Well, I think flying is pretty fun. So do I. It's like, you can get down there. Okay, now roll down the red carpet for Ryan with national news. Thanks, Luke. Hi, I'm Ryan. On June 23rd, 2014, Market Basket Board of Directors fired CEO Arthur T. DeMoulis. Most of the company's 25,000 non-unionized workers walked down in an effort to get their overthrown CEO returned. On June 24th, rallies began outside Market Basket stores. Early July, truck drivers refused to make deliveries to Market Basket stores. More protesters than applicants showed up to the job fairs. By August 10th, revenues were down approximately 92%. On August 17th, the governors from Massachusetts and New Hampshire met with the DeMolis cousins. O after overwhelming pressure, the board of directors of Market Basket agreed to sell the company to Arthur T. on August 27 for $1.5 billion. Under Arthur T's leadership, the supermarket chain was able to sh ship 2.3 million cases of beef, poultry, and seafood within seven day days to bring the popular chain back to business. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Wonderful story on the Mark Basket Boy Scott. Can you believe it went on for that long, Emily? Yeah, that's re that was really long, and that was a lot of money. Well, they're happy to have Arthur T back. Now now to Devin with International News. Hi, my name is Devin Ortiz and I'm here to tell you about a touching story about an NFL player and his three-year-old daughter who has neuroblastoma, a form of cancer. Devin Still has been an NFL player with the league for many years now. Mr. Still is number 75 for the Cincinnati Bengals. Every time the Bengals play the Patriot, the Patriots, the Patriot cheerleaders dress up in Still's uniform to show support for Mr. Still's daughter. They have a special move called the fist pump to give Mr. Still good luck to play a good game. Over 10,000 Devin Still jerseys have been sold, raising $1 million for the Cincinnati Children's Hospital Pediatric Cancer Research Efforts. When the Patriots cheerleaders finished their performance, Mr. Robert Kraft announced that he would donate on one bed behalf $1 million to the pit. Cincinnati Pediatrics Hospital. 25,000, 20, best of all, Lee Still's daughter has had a tumor completely removed. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Devin. That was a very touching story. I can't, I can't believe that Robert Kraft donated so, that much money to, to the hospital. Yeah, it was also really nice that the Patriots cheerleaders dressed up in his uniform. Yeah, now to Devin, now to Aaron with your five day forecast. Thanks, Luke. Good morning, Londonderry. I'm Aaron with your five-day forecast. On Monday, we have 31 degrees with a low of 28 degrees and cloudy skies. On Tuesday, we have 40 degrees with a low of 17 degrees, partly cloudy skies. Then we have a three-day snowstorm. On Wednesday, we have 17 degrees with a low of 6 degrees and snowy. Keep your snow shovels out because on Thursday, 
we have 16 degrees with a low of 2 degrees and snowy. And last, on Friday, 19 degrees with a low of 2 degrees and snowy. So bundle up on the dairy because we are going to have a cold week. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Ryan. So now we know what to wear for the next five days. It's going to be really cold out tomorrow. Yeah. Now, now here's Luke with sports. Are you a kid who likes sports? I mean, thank you, Emily. I'm Luke with today's sports. Are you a kid who likes sports? I am. Do you, are you looking for a sports team to, to play around our area? Well, there are a lot of sports teams to play around London. One of them is Laugh Field, located behind the fire station. station. Laugh Field hosts rec recreational baseball, basketball, and tennis leagues. Another field is West Road. There you can do recreational soccer and lacrosse and many other sports. The fields are free to use and nobody is using them. The next place is Dairy Sports Zone. You have to pay to sign up for a court or a team, but the money is worth it. There are a lot of sports courts like basketball, field hockey, um, futsal and volleyball. There are also some stuff you can do on turf, like soccer and lacrosse. The last place is the Londonderry YMCA, there you, where you can enjoy free swim, swimming lessons, summer camp, flag football, archery, basketball, and many, many other fun sports. Hope to see you back in the field. Back to you, Emily. Thank you, Luke, for that wonderful list of places to go and do sport, for kids to go and do sports around town. Now we have Devin and Ryan interviewing Brendan Wall. Interview with Brendan Wall, a graduate from LHS who plays across at Pace University in New York. How is college compared to high school? College is, there's a lot more free time, but it's, and a lot more independence and freedom, but it's, it's, you need to manage your time wisely and you need to focus on your studies. That free time is what I use to go to the library a lot of the time, so take advantage of the of the computer labs and library while well, you can now because it will just help you with your study habits later. Is getting into Pace University hard? Getting into Pace University isn't, it's it's relatively hard. You have to, you have to work hard in, in high school and you need to push yourself for any, any like if you're trying to go to college at all. So it's, yeah, it's it can be, it can be challenging to get into if you don't push yourself, so. What kind of job do you want? Um, well, right now I'm going for business, and I would I would like any job in like the marketing career or um, anywhere like working for maybe even be a CEO someday. That'd be that'd be cool. But if anything, I'd like a small business job to start out with, and then work my way from there. Did you have to have good grades growing up? Um, yeah, you should have good grades growing up. If you like, I said, if you want to go, if you want to go into college. You, but um, for me, yeah, you, you need you needed um, relatively decently grades. Like you need pretty good grades to get uh, into uh, in any ten school like Pace University. How many years have you been been playing lacrosse? I've been playing lacrosse since my freshman year of high school, and but I didn't just play in high school. I played for the other teams like the New Hampshire Tomahawks and the United State Warriors while I was growing up through high school. So. Do you have free time between sports and academics? Um, yes, but when we are when we are in a season, like we play in the fall and we play in the spring, and when we're in those seasons, there's not very much free time. There's there's little free time that I the free time that I mostly spend is at the library and eating at the cafeteria. So Do you play any other sports except other than lacrosse? Um I don't I don't I'm not committed there to play any other sports, no, like I only play lacrosse for pace, but there's also intramural sports where I just play against other students at the school. Um, and I play basketball and um, soccer and volleyball and other sports like that. What else do you like to do or involved in at college and high school? And did that help for college entrance as well? Um, yeah, there's there's the student government at Pace that I'm involved in now, and other organizations like I'm starting to get into more business organizations because that's what I want to focus my career on. But 
In high school, yes, definitely. I was in the class representatives, and I was in big buddies, and other groups like that, and those, those all help. Any group you can be in will help you get into college, because that's just another great thing you can put on your resume. Yep. Thanks. Great to see you London, Ireland doing well in college. Now to Kylie with Road Safety. Thanks, Luke. Hi, I'm Kylie, and I'm going to tell you something very important in the winter while you're driving. Allow yourself to leave earlier when you're heading out. There's probably going to be more traffic. The cars are going to be slower than usual most of the time. Here are some tips on how to be safe. First, clear all of your windows and mirrors of ice so you don't get distracted. Next, when you're driving in rain or slippery roads, it can take 10 times longer to stop, so keep your distance from the car in front and in back of you. Remember to keep your windshields clear of ice or hail and wash them constantly. Also keep some bottles of wash and water to clean your windows and windshields. Never go beyond the speed limit in icy weather or any weather. Keep some supplies in your vehicle like an ice scraper and a de-icer. It's always good to keep an extra tire or two in your trunk just in case. Now you should stay safe during winter driving. Remember to always allow yourself to leave earlier. Now back to you in the studio. Thanks for those wonderful tips on road safety. Now to Emily with entertainment news. Thank you, Luke. Hi, I'm Emily with your entertainment news. I'm a big Star Wars fan. I hope you are, too. Have you heard about the new movie coming out in 2015? Well, I have. It's called Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. I'm hoping to go see it. J.J. Abrams is the director, and he also directed Star Trek. The movie is scheduled for theater release on December 18th, 2015. I'm getting my ticket as soon as they go on sale. Now back to you in the studio. Thank you, Emily. And that, now that's all for now. See you next time on Tiger News. The nightlight blanket has three colors. Green, blue, and red. It's great for kids who are afraid of the dark. Plug it in, push a button, and it turns on. It saves 25% electricity. Only $10.99, shipping and handling extra. Purchase yours at nightlightblanket.com. Only, only for a limited time. Call 1-800-LIGHT-UP. Hi, welcome to NHLN. Hi, my name is Allie. Hi, I'm John. Here's Nathan on the weather. Hi, my name is Nathan and I got the weather forecast. Today is going to be 26 degrees and the low is 16 degrees, so you better wear a jacket. And tomorrow is going to heat up a little to 36 degrees and the low is 15 degrees. The 16th is going to be 35 degrees and the low is going to be seven degrees, so you better bundle up. The 17th is going to be the coldest of the week, 24 degrees, and the low is going to be six degrees. Then it's gonna heat up to 25 degrees, and the low is six degrees. Back to you in the studio. Then I better put my jacket on tomorrow. Here's Mosmo with international news. Thanks, Sally. Hi, I'm Mosmo with a story on how Australians try to save one of their cutest creatures. With her cute little face and big fluffy ears, Oxley Cayley is one of the cutest koalas around. But her life wasn't always like that. In 2009, hospital staff found her injured in a road. Vets thought that she was hit by a car. To save her life, they had to remove her leg and later she lost an eye. Now she is too vulnerable to live in the wild so she will carry out the rest of her life in the koala hospital. Other koalas in the wild are struggling because their homes are being cut down for houses, roads, and stores. Australians have been making an effort to save the koalas. They have been moving koalas to remote island, and they have made it illegal to hunt koalas. Back to you, John. Here is, now here is Allie with national news. Thanks, John. Studies have recently showed that electronics don't just need energy. The brightness of the screen gets into your thought process and will cause you to keep thinking instead of sleeping. And the only time you think while you sleep is when you dream. And here's a little more information on that on this topic. In 2010, doctors read 36 studies conducted on minors that involve sleep issues with electronics in use. One of the doctor's most consistent findings was that excessive media use causes shorter or delayed sleep. And here's a way to prevent sleep loss. The average doctor recommends no electronics past 8 o'clock. Computers, TVs, and other electronic devices stimulate the brain. Light from the screen passes through the eye and causes the human body to believe it is still daytime or daylight. The body is trained to sleep during the darkness of night. The best way to get a better sleep is turn off 
all electronics one hour before going to bed. <laughs> Sorry. So that is how electronics affects sleep and other body behaviors. Back to you, John. Thanks, Allie. And here's Alana with local news. Thank you, John. Last year, the London Area Wildcats Division 10 cheer team made it all the way to nationals, which were in Orlando, Florida. The team spent two weeks fundraising for the trip. The team left December 10, 2014. They spent five days there in Florida. Before that even happened, the team had a regional cheer competition of the Rise and Wireless Center. They had to come in first or second place to advance. The team came in second place and advanced to nationals. The next day, they had a judges' review as a Omni Resort in Champions Gate. On December 14th, the team competed and took the mats at 2.30 p.m. The team came in fourth place and almost came in third place. There were hundreds of people there. All the girls had pretty resin uniforms. For the awards party, the Wildcats got mustaches, glasses, and necklaces. Monday morning, the girls came home from a long trip and are hoping they will make it to our shows again next year, too. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Alana. Now here's John with sports news. Thanks. Now to news on sports. Today I will be discussing the top five hockey players of all time. Number one, Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky is the number one hockey player because he holds 25 records that will probably never be broken, including most goals ever, most assists ever, and most points ever. Wayne Gretzky played for four teams in the NHL, the New York Rangers, the Edmonton Oilers, the LA Kings, and the Arizona Coyotes. He was a centerman. Number two, Bobby Orr. Robert Gordon Orr, a.k.a. Bobby Orr, is a Canadian hockey player who played for the Bruins for 10 seasons and the Blackhawks for two seasons. Bobby was a defenseman. Number three, Mario Lemieux. Mario Lemieux is another Canadian hockey player who played for the Pittsburgh Penguins for 17 seasons, 1984 to 2006. He was also a centerman. Number four, Gordie Howe. Gordie Howe, he played 26 seasons with the Detroit Red Wings, 1946 to 1980. He was a winger. Number five, Sidney Crosby. Sidney Crosby is the current captain for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Can you believe that his salary is 12 million US dollars a year? Wow, he is a centerman forward. Back to you, Allie. Thanks, John. Now here's Sarah with entertainment. Sarah, and I'm here to tell you about the top five novels of 2015. They are as followed. The Worst Vacation of My Life. This book is about an almost eight-year-old boy named Myron with spending his summer vacation in the French countryside with his three, with his three cousins in a, bathing, in a bathing suit that doesn't quite fit. Next, we have Eat Like a Bear. This book is great if you like illustrations. It's about a hungry grizzly bear that wakes up in the spring and is determined to look for food. Next, we have Building Our House. This book is done using watercolors. This is great. This shows a family coming together to accomplish their goal of building their home. The Day the Crayons Quit is a great book if you're looking for something funny. All poor Duncan wants to do is color. However, his crayons have a mind of their own. The, finally, we have The Flight of the Honeybee. This book is the, about the day of the life of the honeybee. So there you have it, five great books for you to enjoy. So grab a cup of cocoa and a blanket and enjoy. Back to you guys. In Thanks, Sarah. Now here's Sarah and Nathan with the amazing Ed Webster. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi, I'm Nathan. And we're here today with an interview with Ed Webster. Ed Webster. Who is an accomplished author and a professional mountain climber. Thank you, Mr. Webster, for Skyping in with us today. Hi there. I started mountain climbing when I was 11 years old, after my mother got me a book about Mount Everest from the local library. She saw that I loved to climb trees, and she thought I should read a mountain climbing book. Wow, sounds like fun. What equipment did you need to be a mountain climber? You needed to have some of the safety equipment for mountain climbing, such as a harness, a climbing harness, a helmet. You also needed very good boots. And I saved my money from lawn mowing and doing gardening chores until I had enough money to buy my first climbing equipment. That was when I was about 
about 11 or 12 years old. I wonder if you can buy all those items at EMS or LL Bean. You can. You can buy all of that equipment at your local outdoor shop, such as EMS or LL Bean. Actually, LL Bean doesn't actually carry climbing equipment anymore, I just remembered. But you can buy all of that equipment at Easter Mountain Sports. How many mountains have you climbed, and which one is the highest altitude? How many mountains have I climbed? Let me think about that. Probably about close to 40 or so. Some smaller ones and some very big ones. The highest mountain that I actually reached the very summit of was the north peak of Mount Everest. It's 24,780 feet above sea level. On Mount Everest, I reached a point only 300 vertical feet from the summit. I reached an altitude of 28,700 feet above sea level on Mount Everest without using bottled oxygen. That's an amazing accomplishment. How long did it take you to climb Everest? It really was an incredible climb that we did. We climbed not only to such an incredible altitude, but my team and I, of four climbers, we also climbed a brand new route up Mount Everest that had never been done before. And we had only four people on our climbing team, and we climbed Everest with no oxygen bottles, no radios at all, and also no Sherpa climbers. The entire expedition took four months from when we left the United States until we returned home, and we were climbing on Mount Everest for about two and a half months. How long did you cook? And how long did you cook and set up camp on the mountain? Um, we did our cooking ourselves when we were on the mountain. So we carried lightweight food such as ramen noodle soup and cup of soup, um, some pre-cooked vacuum-packed meals. We also had instant oatmeal and Pop-Tarts for breakfast. That was tasty. And when we were down below at base camp, we had one Sherpa climber who was a cook, our friend Pasang Norbu, and he uh, did all the cooking at base camp, and he was an excellent cook. I don't think I could camp on a mountain like you have. When did you decide to retire from mountain climbing? When I turned 40 years old, I'm 58 years old now, when I turned 40 years old, I thought, Maybe I had climbed enough really tall mountains. I had participated on a total of seven expeditions to the Himalaya, including three Mount Everest expeditions. And I thought maybe I had climbed enough big mountains when I turned 40. But I still climb mountains today. And about a year ago, I climbed Mount Manadnock with my 12-year-old daughter, and that was great fun. How many books have you written? I have written a total of five mountain climbing books. I had authored the rock climbing guidebook to the White Mountains of New Hampshire, where you live. I wrote three editions of the rock climbing in New Hampshire guidebook over a 30-year period. Then I wrote a book about climbing in a part of Norway, and then my big book is my Mount Everest book, Snow in the Kingdom, My Storm Years on Mount Everest, and that book is my autobiography, the story I wrote about my life and my three separate expeditions to Mount Everest. Thank you, Mr. Webster, for talking to us today. You're very, very welcome. I hope that you will have a lot of adventures yourself, and maybe you'll also write a book about your life someday, and the interesting places that you've gone, and the people that you've met, and the adventures that you've had. I hope you write a book also. Thank you for, we, thank you, we enjoyed speaking with you today. Thank you, I enjoyed our conversation too. Have a wonderful day.
interesting interview. I want to try. I want to try mountain climbing. Well, that's all we have for today. Bye. Tune in tomorrow. Thanks for watching. So, last one, don't you hate when all your stuff gets lost because nothing is organized? Yeah, but I got a Christmas groove it for Christmas. So that never happens to me. Cool. Can we see it? Yeah. It holds my phone, my flash drive, my earbuds, and much, much more. That's so handy. Yeah, now I never lose anything. For only $25, buy yours at GrooveIt.com. Wow, maybe you should get something to organize the rest of your room. and here is the history of the Londonderry Women's Club. The Londonderry Women's Club brings diverse women together, creating an environment that nurtures friendships. Their mission is to commit to the future generations by, by maintaining scholarships and community projects. In the 1960s, the Women's Club started gathering members and became big. In 1975, the club took over the Miss Londonderry pageant in conjunction with the Chamber of Commerce led by Rosamond Van Dyen. The club also helped with the dental program for children. The first social event presented by the club was a barbecue at the home of Wallace P. Mock. In the 1970s, the club was renamed the Londonderry Women's Club. They also formed a drug awareness committee and worked with the schools on the elementary and the junior high levels. Now back to you, Peter. Thanks, Isabel. Now, if you like Guinness World Records, here's your story, Emmett with the National News. Thanks, Peter. Hi, I'm Emmett, and I'm bringing you your national news. On December 1st, 2014, 1,039 people and animals dressed as angels, wise men, shepherds, innkeepers, Mary, Joseph, baby Jesus, religious royalty, camels, donkeys, sheep, and cows at Rock Canyon Park in Provo, Utah. Why? They broke the world record of 898 people posing in a nativity scene in the United Kingdom, which was set by Archbishop Temple School in Preston, Lancashire on December 18th, 2013. Organizers wanted to emphasize religious faith over Christmas season shopping. Back to you in the studio. Very interesting, Emmett. I might have to go for one of those world records sometime soon. Hmm. Yeah, me too. Probably have to. Didn't know people cared that much about things. Yeah. Now to the chocolate crisis of the world. With Thank you, Isabel. You already know it's not too healthy to eat too much chocolate, but something other than your own willpower will keep you from eating chocolate. According to Mars Inc. and Barry Calvot, two of the world's biggest chocolate makers, people are eating more cho people are eating more cocoa than farmers can grow. Last year, the world ate 70,000 metric tons more chocolate than growers were able to produce in cocoa beans. Chocolate makers say the effect could be over 1 million tons by 2020 and 2 million by 2030. Experts say that chocolate is disappearing due to weather changes in West Africa, which is the largest producer of cocoa beans in the world. But don't panic just yet. One Central American research organization is working on disease-resistant cocoa beans that taste good. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Ellie. Hope they get that resolved soon. I might have to become a farmer if I don't get my chocolate. Yeah, me too. I might have to go for chocolate right now. Okay. Soon. Now to Josh with your five day forecast. Thanks, Peter. Hello, I'm Joshua Tutsi. I'm going to be your weather person today. So here's your five day forecast. On Saturday the 11th, it will be sunny with a low of 27 degrees and a high of 31 degrees. On, on, Sunday, the, on Sunday the 12th, it will be sunny and cloudy with a low of 31 degrees and a high of 35 degrees. So when I say to sit by the warm fire in the fireplace. <laughs> on, mo on Monday the 13th, it will be sunny and cloudy with a low of 31 degrees and with a low of 32 degrees and a high of 36 degrees. On Tuesday the, on Tuesday the 14th, it will be times of sun and clouds like the previous days of the week. With a low, with a low of 28 degrees and a high of 35 degrees. Who knows who day this is going to be? 
And finally, on Wednesday the 15th, there will be a blend of sun and clouds with a low of 19 degrees and a high of 32 degrees. What a nice day to make some steaming hot cocoa. Mm. So there's your weather back in the studio. Thanks, Josh. I'll definitely be spending quite a bit of time inside this week. Now, an interview with Alyssa Frost. Hi, I'm Erica. Allie. And Michael. And we're here FaceTiming with Mrs. Frost, owner of Talia's Restaurant in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Why did you want to start this restaurant? Well, my husband and I have both been in the restaurant business for a very long time. And um, so my husband is actually the son of one of the owners of Jamie's. And so when they moved, we decided to stay in their old location and take over and kind of do our own thing. About how many people come a day? Oh, it depends on the day. Um, usually about 150 to 300, depending on the day and depending if it was a weekday or a weekend. Weekends tend to be busier than weekdays. What, what, why did you name it Talia's? Talia is our daughter who is going to be three years old tomorrow. Um, so we named it for her. She's super fun and spunky and we thought that that would be really cool for her. What's your most popular meal? Oh, our most popular meal is our stuffed French toast. It's French toast and in the middle it has a sweet cream cheese filling with um, strawberries, blueberries, and bananas. And that's our kind of signature thing. Everybody loves it. What is your favorite meal? Oh, my favorite? Whew, that's tough. Um, I would say my favorite thing to have is the turkey club. Our turkey is um, a home roasted turkey. It's not like deli turkey, so it's super good, like you would have on Thanksgiving. And that's on the sandwich, and that's really delicious. Uh, how long ago did you open the restaurant? So we opened last April 28th, um, so we've been open for about eight months now. Oh, um, do you have more than one location? We do not have more than one location, but we do have another daughter who was born about uh, six months ago, six and a half months ago, and my husband and I always kind of joke around that we need to open up a restaurant for her, so maybe in the future we'll have a, sep uh, a second location. Do you have a family members that work at your restaurant? We do. Um, so my husband is the one who's in charge of the kitchen, and he's there during the week when I'm not there. And then there's myself, and our six-month-old daughter, Reagan, usually comes with me on the weekends. Um, but other than that, it's just the, the two of us. Thank you for being us here today. Of course. No problem. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, guys. Now, your top five quarterbacks with Michael. Hello everyone, Michael here with your daily sports. Today we are discussing the top five quarterbacks of all time, so let's get started. At number five is Steve Young, who played for the San Francisco 49ers. Steve Young had speed and could throw a powerful pass. He is the best Super Bowl quarterback in history, throwing six touchdowns. At number four, we have Tom Brady, who currently plays for the New England Patriots. Tom Brady has played in three Super Bowls in B and has been MVP twice. Tom Brady is a future Hall of Famer. At number three is Dan Marino, who played for the Miami Dolphins. Dan Marino was not fast, but he could almost go to end zone to end zone as a rookie. Dan Marino played in Super Bowl in a Super Bowl against Joe Montana in the 49ers and lost. And number two is John Elway, who played for the Denver Broncos. John Elway was an amazing quarterback and did one of the most famous plays of all time called the Elway Spin, diving over one player and getting a first well needed to win the Super Bowl. At number one is Joel Montana. Montana had won three Super Bowls and has been named MVP for two of the three Super Bowls. He has 
he has he has held many throwing records during his football career. Thanks for watching. Back to you in the studio. Awesome quarterbacks. I definitely heard a couple of my favorites on there. Now Peter with entertainment. Hi viewers, I'm Peter with your entertainment news. Today I'm discussing about the top five nonviolent video games for that are great for kids. I know a lot about video games, so you can trust me on these games. At number five, we have Portal. Portal is a mind-bending puzzle game. At number four, we have Little Big Planet. Little Big Planet is where you're this person who's trying to save the planet and you also get to customize your character to look cool. At number three, we have the Super Mario series. We all know who Super Mario is, but if you don't know, he's an Italian plumber who's trying to save Princess Peach from the evil Bowser. At number two, we have Legend of Zelda. The Legend of Zelda is, is about this kid called Link who's trying to save the Princess Zelda from Ganondorf. At number one, we have Minecraft. Minecraft is a game where you're trying to survive to strike diamond, build an awesome house, and defeat the ender dragon. See, back to you, Isabel. Amazing games. Really heard some of my favorites on there. Now, Erica, with your public safety announcement. Thanks, Isabel. Hi, I'm Erica, and I'm going to talk to you about how to dress while skiing. To stay warm for skiing, wear a long sleeve under armor shirt and warm pants for your first layer. You should wear another shirt with a long neck and relatively tight sweatpants. Wear a ski jacket that's a little bit too long for you, and ski pants that are a little bit too big. It will keep you more warm. Ski, ski socks are necessary to keep your feet warm, and make sure your, your boots are, are strapped on tight so they don't fall off. Ski goggles aren't necessary for skiing, but they are very helpful. Also, wear ski gloves so that you don't get frostbite. Finally, you need you need to wear a helmet so you don't fall and get a concussion. Cotton will not keep you warm for long, so you shouldn't wear it. You should wear wool instead. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Erica. Be sure to stay safe on the slopes. That's it for today. See you tomorrow. Bye. Are you tired of your mom telling you you can't have soda at dinner time? Yeah, thanks, Mom. Do you like yes. soda? If you said yes to any of these questions, then you're in the right spot. Mmm. With soda, your parents will always say yes because they think it's 100% vegetables, but we all know soda is pure sugar. And it's 150% more effective than 5-hour energy. So buy it today for only $99.99 per drop. Uh, if you do want to call 111-222-ZODA today. I'm sorry, but I don't have the money for this product. This is a potential TV item. Security, we have a problem.